Hi, and hope you are doing well. I'm Jody, and today I was doing something and thought it's good to share it with you guys too. Why? Because I haven't recorded anything for a long time, and I've thought this is not good. It's like a, a rolling stone, not a rolling stone, but rolling a wheel or stone. When it's moving, it's easy just to, with a little bit force, you can continue rolling your wheel or channel or whatever it's called. Uh, stone, round stone. But when you're stopped, it's much, much more difficult to start rolling. So let's roll. It's inertia or something. Anyway, I was trying to troubleshoot something in my network and I ran a command. Oh, you always start with the ping command, then you can go with trace route. Ping just pings one server and tells you if it's reachable. Trace route shows you every single step it takes to reach here and go back. Both are useful. Trace route is more fun, but ping is more universal. For example, a classic example is 8888. When you go with this, okay, you are pinging that, pinging that. And always remember, if you are a network engineer, ping should work on both sides. When you ping a server, you are sending an ICMP packet to that server. And whenever that server sees your ICMP packet or ping packet, answers back with the answer. Sometimes it's called pong. So when you have this ping pong, your server says, okay, I got the answer. Sometimes you configure this correctly, but the route back doesn't work. But this is not our case. Uh, I mean, in this video, I'm going to talk about another command, how trace route works. But when you ping, as you can see, it gives you some data. It says, okay, reachable, reachable, reachable with these times, 21 milliseconds, time to leave. I will talk about this in more depth. And then it says, I sent four packets, four packets received, zero packet loss. And these are my timings. My round trip is 12. My average is 17, max and standard deviation. So you can talk more uh, statistically how it happens. But this is only shows the connectivity. What happens with trace route? If you do a trace route on 8888, it will show you the whole steps it's taking. Just have a look. This is me sitting in my home. And I have a rotor here. It is called 192.168.1254. This is my rotor. Next step, it is connected to a rotor in Telus company at the moment. Then there is one, another rotor in Telus again. Then there is one server called 209 something. It's an IP address. Then I don't know what is here. Something strange. And then Google is here. DNS Google, which is 8888. Okay, now I have all the steps. But how this is possible? Normally, when I'm sending a packet, I say I want to connect with to 88888 or dns.google. What happens is, uh, my packet has some data, starts its journey, it goes through all of this, this server receives it and gives me a answer back. I don't know about these guys here. How Traceroute does it? It's a fun question. Reminds me of a friend when I was a child, maybe he was joking me and he was telling me, just imagine how many packets are lost in the world and they are just going rotor by rotor and someday there will, there will be an overload of packets because I'm here, I'm sending a packet to this server. For some reason, this first server doesn't answer, routes is wrong or whatever. Normally, it works like this. You send the packet to the next rotor. The rotor looks at your packet and says, okay, the destination is 8888. I am not 8888, but I've seen it once from this side entering. 
so I will give it to this guy. He may know about it. This is a very simple routing protocol. This guy says, okay, 888, I don't know, but I've seen once getting a packet from this source from my this port. So I will give it to this guy. This guy says, ah, I've never seen 888, but I'm configured to give it to my parent packet server here. So this is how routing works in a very simple way or the simplest routing. Uh, but what happens for the lost packets? To just go around and around in the internet? Obviously, no. I was a child. The first TCP IP book I wrote, I found out about this TTL concept, which is time to leave. How much time do you have to leave? There was a movie, they had the time to leave here, but also reminds me of an idea of the Eastern philosophy that you have a specific number of breaths. And when you are out of those breaths, you will die. So if you go slow and breathe slowly, you will have a longer life. But why? I don't know. Whenever I had fun, I was breathing fast. Anyway, this time to leave is a very fun concept. When you are pinging, it says I'm sending 64 bytes packet, one packet with 64 bytes, to this server with time to leave of 119. So, whenever this packet is going through the internet, whenever it's reaching a new uh, server, router, or hop, that hop will reduce one from this. So it would be when starting, it starts with 119, then 118, then 117. If it goes to zero, the server gives back an error and says, your time to leave exceeded. I cannot deliver it anymore. And it's a very sane idea. Packets won't go around and around forever. Same, if you are, I'm telling you to go to shop and buy something, I can tell you, ask from people. And you would go out and forever you will ask from people because some nasty guy will tell you, go to the next city. And the next city, they don't know about the address. Someone just says somewhere and they will send you around. I can tell you, just ask five times. If you ask for five times and you didn't found it, just return back from the way you went. This works. This is time to leave. Great idea for trace routes. Now you may have an idea how trace route works. And fun fact, the guy who invented TraceWord tra found it kind of by a, a mistake or by luck. He was trying to troubleshoot network, saw some packet as time to leave exit, and thought to itself, with himself, wow, what happens if I create a packet with time to leave equal one? and send it to 8888. So I'm sitting in my home. I have my rotor here. Tell us what's here. Next, tell us something here. Something strange here. And then Google was here. I'm sending one packet here to this one. And time to leave is 119. Okay, it goes. It becomes 118, 117, 116, 115, 114. And the answer will go works. But if I set TTL on one, what will happen? I will give my packet to my rotor. My rotor will decrease one from one. Now TTL is zero. So my rotor will answer back TTL exceeded. You don't have any more TTL. I have an error. So I will know this IP address because that's one. That's the one who is telling me that TTL is exceeded. So the next time I can set TTL on 2, this will get it, will decrease it with TTL 1. The packet will reach here to tell us. Tell us will decrease another one. Now TTL is 0. Tell us will give me an error and says, I'm tell us and I have bad news for you. Your packet, your packet's TTL exceeded. Okay, now I know this name. Next, I will say another one with TTL 3. We'll go from here to here, from here to here, then to here, then to here, and this guy will answer back. And then this guy will answer back. But next I will send one with TTL 5. 
I might have an issue with zero, it's counted or not, but the idea you get it. When it's five, it goes from here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here. Someone has configured their network and would tell them if you see something like a trace road or you saw something with TTL zero or any suspicious activity, don't answer, just delete the packet. That's why I wait some time, no answer, and I just show an star, no answer, no answer, no answer. So I will put TTL as six. Now it reaches Google and Google answers back and I have it here. This is how it works. Let me show it in a trace road packet in real life. So you will see the network. I can do a root, root, sudo. This is it. TCP dump on this network, right? Everything here. And then I will have a trace road here. So I will start this. I will do my trace road. Now that's more secure. This is not good because I want to see what is going on. It's not answering back. So I'm just waiting for my packets. And when I don't get any answer back, I will just send one with another TTL. And this is the answer now i have all the packets this is what tcp dump does wow ai is becoming very 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 nice okay this is my tcp dump it shows all the networking in my computer on that specific port you can see icmp starts here my internet port control protocol uh Data, where is time to live? Uh, internet user diagram, UDP. What are these? Let me find what I'm looking for. This is it. What is that? Okay, that's something else. This is what I'm looking for from my computer to 8888. And we should have a time to leave here. Ah, that's it. Time to leave. I've sent one time to leave one here from my computer to 8888. Then I get an answer back. It says, Time to leave exceeded in transit. I'm this person and the packet you were requesting has an issue. Time to leave is finished. So I know that this is the first answer who answers back. Then I will go to the next step here. Time to leave again yek or one. Why is that? If I go down, you have another one with time to leave one. Where is it? Time to leave one, time to leave one. We have to have, ah, this is it. Time to leave one. You can do it only once, but normally trace road does three probes each time. So when you are sending the first one with time to leave set to one, you, three, you send three times. One, two, three. Here, when you see an error, you see three probes return back without an answer. So you send three because you can double check, you can have a failure tolerance, and also you can show averages and these kind of stuff. So you send three times from each probe. When that works, you will go to time to leave two here. Time to leave two, and when you are sending time to leave two, another person answers back and says, Time to leave exceeded in transit. I am this IP. This is the second IP who answered us. This one, you say, Okay, but I'm continuing to send packets. I'm sending with two, I'm sending another one with two. Now I'm sending time to leave three 
And when I send the time to leave tree, uh, I get an answer from this guy, 190. So you totally understand what is going on. Later, this is 8, 8, uh, sorry, 4, 4, 4. Now you have 4, now you have 4, 4, 4. And as you can see, the 4 one doesn't have an immediate answer back because that firewall is not answering back. And the next one would be obviously clear with no error. So it's a little bit more difficult to find it here. But it would be a successful ICMP because or UDP because I'm contacting the last server and it answers back correctly. There is also one small fun trick in these packets. Each of them do have a very specific uh, address. When I'm sending them, for example, these UDP ones, you can see that my source IP address is something large, which is normal, but my destination port is something very large, which is not very normal. This is because I want the last server to answer back with an error and says this port is closed. That way I will know the name of the last server who is answering me back. Anyway, this was something I wanted to share with you. Now you have a very, very, very clear knowledge how Traceroute works and it's fun. As you saw, as anything, if you go deeper, things become fun. Hope you enjoy.